if you've never flossed your nether regions, you're really missing out. Hey, bike farmers, thanks for clicking in. This is gonna be a nice, easy, quickie tune-up. Well, now that I said it out loud, it probably won't be, but let's hope it will be. This bike is in really good shape, not a lot of miles. All I see wrong with it is a flat rear tire and the bar wraps coming undone. But everything else looks pretty good on this bike. This is a customer's bike and they wanted to get their bikes tuned up before they move. It's dirty, needs to be clean, lubricated, and adjusted. This is something that anybody can do and I think everybody should do. Most of this tune-up can be done without tools and you should be able to do it on your own, at home, no problem. It's a really good skill to know just to make sure that your bike is okay before you go out on a ride. There's really not a whole lot different that I do on something like this than I do on one of my major restorations. I just don't have to go into that much depth on a bike like this. So kick back and relax, cause here we go. Okay, per the use, first thing I'm gonna do is pop these wheels off. So like I mentioned in the intro, it's got a flat tire. I'm just gonna take care of that right away. Okay, let's put some air in here and see if we can find the hole, figure out what's going on. Well, it's nothing obvious. In cases like this, I just assume there's a tiny hole in the tube somehow. So it was flat as a pancake, so we'll put a new one in. I'm gonna go through and see if I can find something sharp. Slice my finger open. I'm a risk taker. Check the rim, same way. I figure it'll cut my rubber glove and I'm just gonna say bad luck is what caused that flat. We don't always find the reason and it sure ain't worth fretting about. Fill it up halfway and then I kind of go around and seat it. This is just a good practice to go halfway and then just check your bead all the way around and try to get it nice and even before you cram a bunch of air in there. Way less risk of blowing something up. I'm just putting a ton of air in there. Okay. Air up this other one too. All right. Tires are all good. Let's throw them up in the truing stand. Now this isn't something I'd expect you to have at home as a do-it-yourselfer, but you can do this while the wheel is in the bike too. I'm just gonna take a little Dawn power wash. Squirt things down. That's a really nice cleaner. Kind of clean the side of the rim. Clean the other side of the rim. And then I go through and I floss between the spokes. Wipe up a little of the excess. Go through and do it again. Get it to that stage and I go through and I, the rag has a nice tack to it, it kind of almost becomes a tack cloth. You can go through and wipe down each one of the spokes. Just get the grime off of them. Ok, 
Okay, and like I said, you know, by this time your rag is nice and damp. You can just get a finger in and get back and polish the hub. And of course, when we have a disc brake, we don't want to get chemicals on the disc, on the actual braking surface. But you can just kind of work the rag around. Getting a finger in there again on this hub. going over the spokes again. And then since I know what I'm doing, and I've got the truing stand, and it's not a big deal, I always check the wheel for true, and this one's like super straight, so I'm not even gonna touch it. Feel the hub. And again, with hubs, I don't, I don't touch them unless I feel a reason to. So that's all good. You can see how clean it got. And then we're gonna repeat that whole entire process for the front wheel. So you can see how dirty this bike got. You know, this is a giant any road. And I think he was mainly using it for crushed limestone gravel bike trail kind of stuff. So that's quite a bit of power wash. You really don't need that much, but it was so dirty. And I'm using a kind of dirty rag here too. No sense in using a clean rag when things are this filthy. I just use good old fashioned elbow grease. The floss technique is really good when you're dealing with the nether regions here. If you've never flossed your nether regions, you're really missing out. You know, it's okay to hit your bike with a nice garden hose too. But here in Wisconsin in the middle of winter, it's not always possible. And then everything's gotta dry too. But I just wipe everything down. This is just more of the same. And I don't always go into this much detail when I'm doing a regular tune-up service. But this one is really pretty dirty and there's not a whole lot more that we're doing to this bike. So I'm just gonna give it a little extra effort here. If you have access to compressed air, It's a good way to get in all the nooks and crannies too. And then while I have the bike upside down and I have access to these cables, might as well lubricate things a little bit. I can let gravity kind of suck that lube down into the cables. I don't, I don't like to touch cables on internally routed bikes unless I have to. And once you have the bulk of it knocked off, my favorite bicycle polish is, I think Behold might be taking the lead here in my favorite, but any lemony fresh wooden furniture polish, I like the cheapest stuff you can get from the grocery store, which happened to be Behold last time, and it really works well. And you can just kind of spray everything, everything but your discs and your pads. I mean, I guess I just took a little bit of a risk there with the 
disc brake pads, but not too much of a risk. But that really shines a bike up. Lake new. It's the best trick in my book. No need to buy anything expensive. Like I mentioned before, when you have internally routed cables, I don't like to take cables out of the bike. It's just inviting trouble. It's not always a big deal, but you can let gravity do a lot of the work. You just drop some lube and then work the lever. Now, if this felt really gooey or sticky or grungy, I'd definitely pull it, clean it, replace it, do what it takes. Um, but it feels really good. So this is just kind of preventative. And that's one spot. And we can do the same to the front. Don't forget to put your seal back the way you found it. Keeps the dust and grime out of there. So yeah, obviously this is a lot easier when you have a bike repair stand. You know, if you're an avid cyclist, you should probably have one. Get yourself a good folding stand from Park Tool. Keep it in your garage. This isn't something you need to do before every ride, but I definitely go through my bikes regularly, you know, before every big ride, just to make sure that everything's in the right place. I just go through it and I'll drop, you know, a couple drops of lube here and there. And then my bike's always working perfectly. And, you know, really it's only, it only takes like, once you get used to doing it and know what you're doing, it takes 15 minutes to go through a bike and keep it clean and lubed up. You know, it's preventative maintenance, really simple, but something you can easily do at home. Clean bike and clean wheels. We'll put them together and we'll have ourselves a bicycle. I'm gonna use a little bit of one step on this chain. It's a cleaner and lubricant. Just cause the chain is mostly dusty and it's a little dry. I just spray some on there and I'm going in, the, I'm in the high gear cause any of the spray from the aerosol keeps it off that disc. I know that's gonna get some, that's gonna get some comments. It's a trigger point for a lot of you. And then I shift all the way up into the low gear and then without pedaling, I click the lever to loosen the cable and I can pull this piece of housing out. Once you get this piece of housing out, you can lubricate that little bit and that makes things slicker than snot on a doorknob. There's definitely something going on with the shifting here. Let's take a closer look. I'll try to walk you through what I'm doing here, what I'm looking at. So I'm in the high gear. Okay, so I just shifted once up. Okay, and it's, it's struggling to go up and I can feel my cable tension is a little low. So back the barrel adjuster out a smidge. Three, four, okay, now it's shifting nice and crisp, very smooth. Okay, I'm all the way up into the low gear. Back down, and it's, I'm hearing a little bit. Um, and it's not just the front derailleur. Feeling, okay, so I'm, I'm just turning the barrel adjuster in like a quarter turn. Just dialing it in. Cause there's, hey, the bike is shifting and accessing all the gears and then there's tuned. And I'm here for a tune up. So I'm gonna make it just right. That doesn't feel perfect. 
And I don't know how to explain it to you. You should get a JIS-2 screwdriver. A regular Phillips will work, but the JIS-2s are better. And then these screws here are your limit screws. There's a high and a low. They have a little H and an L. And this is the high gear, even though it's on the low part of the cassette, it's the high gear, it's the little one. And I'm just gonna back it off that much. That was like a half a turn. And I'm doing that because it was making noise. And it's probably only a noise that someone with my level of experience can hear. But that was a very, very minor improvement I made. Just because I'm gonna drop a little bit of lube. There isn't any lube coming out of this bottle. Oh, there we go. Something was gumming up the works. I'm just kind of dropping lube all over things here. This just helps keep the rust at bay. So now I'm hoping to focus in on the front derailleur here. All right, it's a two by. Oop. And there's a little bit of slack in the cable. There's a barrel adjuster up at the lever and I'm gonna turn that out a full turn and that'll pull that cable a little bit tighter. And that's all it needed. So I'm in the high gear back here and the high gear up front. So this is the very highest gear, which the chain is gonna to wanna to rub on the outside of the derailleur, the inside part of the outside derailleur cable or derailleur cage and it's not anymore. Then there's a trim shift halfway, which will move it just a smidge, and that's fine. Okay, and now it's not rubbing when you're cross-chained. Now, everybody will tell you not to cross-chain, and it's preferable to not cross-chain, but you can do it. It's not gonna break anything. It's just gonna wear things out faster, and it's not the happiest state the drivetrain will ever be in, but it's, not a sin. Okay, now we're in the granny gear and now it's gonna to wanna to rub on the inside part of the inside derailleur cage. And that looks really good. So no adjustment needed there. And then we're gonna check little and little, the cross chain the other way. And you're gonna expect a little bit of rubbing there. So it's rubbing the inside of the outer cage, but there's a trim shift. So if you push your lever over halfway, it moves the derailleur halfway, and now you're cross-chained and not rubbing. So this is perfectly adjusted. I absolutely love this drivetrain and how it's functioning. And it's not, it's, I don't even know how many speeds it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10-speed Shimano. It's working great. Imagine that. Yeah, it says Shimano 10 speed on it. It's not Claris, it's not anything. It's just generic Shimano stuff and it's great. It's wonderful, I love it. You know, some people would say it's cheap garbage, but it's definitely not. This is good, good stuff. Love that. So this is something that I see all the time um, on bikes that are owned and ridden, but not maintained by the owner, which is not something that I expect. But, uh, um, you know, I mean, these are easy things that I, I feel like anybody should be able to do on their own with relatively little effort. But keeping your tape from sliding around on the bars is pretty simple. So I'm just taking a little utility knife here and cutting the finishing tape and removing just the finishing tape. Okay. You wanna be careful that you're not like cutting through the main tape. So this is more finishing tape. Okay, so now we're down to the bar tape. And you can see this is already cut into a wedge. And all I'm gonna do is 
unwrap it until we get to the hood where it looks like, you know, this stuff has all kind of stayed put. You know, part of the problem is, is with this cheap cork tape, there's no sticky on the back, so it, it is going to slide around. It's going to want to, and I'm just pulling with a moderate amount of pressure here. And then I would say about halfway on each layer. I'm going halfway, try to keep things evenly spaced so it looks good. And I'm just going around and around, constant, consistent pressure or tension, I should say. One wrap at a time. Nobody's in a hurry. Get to the end here. Okay, and he's got an accessory. And then you can see it's nice and even. Okay. Then I have nice electrical tape. I don't use the cheap stuff. Cheap stuff just gets gooey and fails. Pay extra and get the good stuff. It's only a couple bucks. And the first two laps around, I'm pulling pretty tight. And then I like to only have one layer. I don't like to wrap electrical tape like the other stuff. It's just one thickness of it. But if you don't pull it super tight, then it's a little bit wider and it covers up all the stuff that you pulled super tight. Then I always like to finish it where it finishes underneath. And then you don't, you know, cause your fingers don't really get underneath. And so it usually stays put then. And now that, you know, because um, people like to ride up here and they're putting all kinds of pressure outward all the time and that's why it slides. But I think I've got that wrapped a little tighter now, so hopefully it prevents that from happening in the future. Yeah, this is the only tricky part really is the finishing tape, you just want to make sure that you're not cutting your bar tape. Yeah, brakes feel really good. No adjustment really needed there. Oh, but that front one's rubbing. Let's take a look at that. Well, this has a pad adjustment too. I can use the pad adjustment, okay. So we're gonna turn that pad in a little bit. Oh, there you go, pad adjustment. So you have a pad adjustment here and here. That's as good as I'm going to get it. Well, there you have it, bike farmers. It's a pretty straightforward tune-up. If you're an avid rider and you're riding a lot, there's little things you can do periodically throughout the season. like. I don't know, once a month maybe? Flip your bike upside down, drop some lube down the cables, check this, check that, wipe it down with some furniture polish, some Dawn Power Wash, and just keep your bike clean. It's not that hard to do, not that big of a deal. It's just basic maintenance. I guess what I'm saying is, the main point of this video is, I think this is stuff that anybody can do, and I think it's stuff that everybody should be doing on their own. So thanks so much for tuning in and watching this far. If you made it to the end, you've already supported the channel the best way you possibly can. The algorithm loves that. Give it a like, that helps too. Subscribe if you haven't. If you really like what you saw and what I really like to see, 
is a super thing. Send me a few bucks, buy me a taco. I love it. If you watch some of the other videos and like those, consider being a member. I get a lot of questions in the comments. I'm just skipping over them now. I don't have time to answer all of them. But if you become a member, give me a few bucks a month, I'll definitely answer your questions for you. There's other perks too. If you spend a little bit more, I'm kind of building out the membership thing. As we build a community together, that'll get better over time. The best thing you can do for yourself though is click that notification bell so you and your bike can stay tuned.